Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can estimate the size of a form data object in JavaScript. So a form data object is a way of creating a payload that can consist of text and file data. And it's in a format that is readily understood by most backend servers because it's sent in the same format as data on a HTML form would be if you were to rely on the default HTML submission behavior. Now for the form data object that I'm constructing here in JavaScript, it consists of two items based upon user input that is given on the front end. So one text and one file input. And when a user clicks on the submit button, I've already selected it and added an event listener listening out for that click. And when that occurs, the form data object is constructed based upon whatever input is given by the user. So the first strategy is to estimate the size of each of the values that have been appended to the form data object, aggregating them to give you a total size of all the values. So items on a form data object are stored there in array-like format as an array of arrays. So you can iterate through this array-like object using a for of loop. Each time inside the loop, you have available to you each item and we're iterating through the form data object. So you can check if the value for the current item is text data using the type of operator. And you want to check the type of the value. And you want to check if the value of that is equal to string. If it is, then you know that it's text data. Now, you might think that a way of estimating the item value would be to query the length property because usually one character equals one byte but if you have special characters like for example German U this is more than one byte this would be two bytes so a more reliable way to estimate the size of text data is to pass it into a blob so I pass in there item at index position one and the reason that I'm doing this is because a blob has a size property on it that gives you the size of the data that you passed into it in bytes. Now, if the value on item is not a string, then it is file data, and we don't have to work anywhere near as hard to get the size of that because it's already in a blob-like file object. So all we have to do is on the value, query the size property. Now we want to aggregate the bytes of all of the values on the items that we've iterated through. So before the loop, we're going to create a new variable with a starting value of zero. And then each time inside the loop, I'm going to be adding the number of bytes of each of the values to the bytes variable. And then after the loop, I'm going to log the value of bytes to the console. Now in the browser, I'll enter some data here and select a file. So I'll select this first image. So on my system, it's 24.5 kilobytes. So we should get a reading that is slightly larger than that in terms of the size. So at the moment, it's logging it in bytes. So 25,133 to get bytes in kilobytes. So we can see that it is just slightly larger than the image. We can divide the bytes by 1024. So I'll enter the data again. So the size of the image is 24.5 kilobytes. So you can see from the kilobytes estimation that it's around the size of the image on my system. The three characters of Bob are not adding much to it, but they are adding something. So you can see that more clearly if I delete Bob from the text input, and then I click submit again, and you see that we've now lost three bytes from the overall payload. Now, let me show you why it's better to calculate text data inside a blob than by length. So let's say Bob is German and he spells his name like this. So it's like Bob. If I click on submit here now, you see that the number of bytes is now 34. It's increased by four over last time. So this special character here 
is taking up two bytes. If we measured this by length, then we would have missed this additional byte. So it's only one byte in this example, but if you have text input that is quite large, then you might be missing quite a few additional bytes. So the advantage of this approach is that you are estimating the size of all of the input that a user has given and nothing more. So if you've got a maximum size limit for the input, then you can tell the user if it's over that, that they have given input that makes it over the limit. You're not holding them accountable for any of the data that exists on the form data object beyond that. So one example of these is the reference names for each of the items on the form data object. So if you want to include these in your calculation as well, then if it's a string value, then you just want to pass the entire item into the blob and estimate the size of that. If the value is of type file, then it won't work passing that into another blob. But what you can do is estimate the size of the value like we were before and the reference name separately and then add those together. So inside the new blob here, we're going to estimate the value of the reference name and you want to get the size of that. So let's test this in the browser now. So I'll enter just one character for the name and an image. So the values are quite similar to last time because we're just adding the reference name to the calculation. So to test that it's working, I'm going to just delete some of the characters on the first item. So it was ending 149. Given that I've deleted four items, it should now be ending with 45 if I enter the same data. So reference names are now included in the calculation. But what is not included here is additional information that is sent by a form data object to a server, letting it know how to interpret the data that is included on it. So you can't get this data by iterating through the items like we are at the moment. So if you want to get the overall size of the form data as it is sent to the server, then you need a slightly different approach. And that is to estimate the size of the form data object as it is seen by the server. So you can do this in JavaScript by creating a new response object manually and passing in as the body on the response object, the form data object that we have created. And then after that, you handle the response object like you would a response object if you were fetching some data. So first, let's take a look at what the form data payload looks like. So we can do that by reading the body of the response object, the text. So this is promise based because reading it to text takes a little bit of time. So we can access the result of this using a then method. And then inside we have available the result inside the function. And I'm just going to log that to the console. So if I send some text and also file, you see we get this very, very large string here with lots of little characters. The important bit is you can see that there's some information here that's being sent to the server about how to interpret the data. So letting the server know that it's a form data object, and then it's telling the server about each of the items on it. So first of all, the user and the data. So that is fairly straightforward. And then for the second item, some more information about it. And then you have the data itself. So this is the additional information that you have on a form data object that you're not measuring when you iterate through each of the items. So you don't actually want to measure the size of this text because we've read the data for the file, which is in raw binary format to text format. So we want to get the size of the payload in its raw format in bytes. So to do that, instead of reading the response object body to text, we read it to blob. And then you know from before that blob has a size property on it. So we can just log the size of the blob to the console. And that's going to give us the overall size of the form data payload, including those additional extras that you just saw. So this final log here 
is for the overall size of the form data payload as it is in the response object. Compare that to this earlier one where we were iterating through each item with for of, adding each of the items, including the reference to the bytes counted. And you can see that this latest log, it is quite a bit bigger than the previous one. So that is accounting for this difference between this 147 and 411, the extras on the form data payload as it was on the response object. Now, even though this is probably the best estimation of form data size, you may not always want to use it because if you are validating the size of the form data object on the front end and preventing a user from, for example, sending an upload, if this is too large, then you are holding them accountable for all of that additional information on the form data payload. A user might be annoyed that they can see that their files add up to less than the file size limit, but they are still being prevented from uploading. So you should choose the one that makes more sense given your particular use case. So that is it for this tutorial on estimating the size of a form data object. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.